Hello! Thanks for joining us, if you've joined us. If you haven't joined us, then I guess we don't really care, but uh, this is the very first live stream for At Mistakes Being Made RPG's crafting side project. Um, my name's Howard Andrews. I'm here with Mike Shearer. Um, he is uh, M Shearer eighty four on Twitter and eighty two. Eighty two. Sorry. I, I don't know. It's on there. And I am at Minilead on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, we both play in Shad's game Hyperion PDX. Uh, and we are both tasked with painting different things for Shad. And I tend to be the guy that makes most of the terrain. And I've painted a ton of minis. I'm not great at it, but I'm pretty good at it. Uh, and I think I make pretty good terrain. So I'm here to just show you how to use some basic techniques. We'll probably come up with an actual project build in the very near future, but I just wanted to sort of take this messy hobby space that I had, pull out some of the stuff that I've got in various stages of completion and show you guys just a few tools and how to use them. So we're going to just jump right in, I guess. Um, any questions from the audience so far? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Chad disagrees with you. He says you're pretty great. I'm pretty great. Uh, so this table is not actually where I normally craft. This is the dining room table. If you are married and want to keep your wife happy, I would advise doing what I did, which is put a really cheap tablecloth down before crafting anything on the table. So that's rule number one. Um, I can't, okay, so I can't tell what, right now this project is what's in the hobby cam. Yep. So this is a fun one that I've been working on for a little bit. This is a wizard for scale. This project is, thank you, that. is uh, <laughs> made out of the pink insulation foam. You can sort of see that sitting here if, yeah, you can see that. Um, I made this piece with pink foam and white foam. The white foam is the, the stuff that is used for the steps. You can see underneath it's still white. Um, the majority of what I used for this particular piece of terrain is just an X-Acto knife. And uh, I'll show you how to do really basic brickwork. Uh, on foam, both on the pink foam and on the white foam. Uh, I'm going to show off my hot wire foam factory cutting tool. This one is the scroll table, which is what allows you to basically like rip straight pieces of foam in large chunks at a time. I'm not very good at using a fence yet because I haven't used this very much yet. I have a larger foam cutter that I have used a lot though, uh, but that one is 48 inches wide. And this one is just like a much smaller tabletop one that I can use to cut reasonable sized pieces of foam on. Um, I'm gonna move this piece into the crafting cam. This particular piece of terrain is the diorama base that I made for Shad's Archon the Cruel. And I'm going to be making another one of those. Probably we'll do that as a project build. Um, but the tree that I made for it, and literally guys, this tree was made with uh, wire and hot glue. I'm going to be adding some more texture to this using some, uh, well, don't tell Shad, but it's toilet paper. And I'll be painting it up again and reattaching it, and that'll look a lot better. Um, so that's a piece. This is a lovely piece that I did not make. I found this. Can you get, is there a way to adjust the light? Or maybe I'll just hold that. Uh, this is just a piece of resin terrain that I found at the pet store. Uh, pet stores are a great place to find pretty much ready to play terrain if you're not feeling very crafty and your budget is a little bit higher than mine is. Uh, for my budget, I usually have to make my own stuff or choose to make my own stuff. Um, this was on sale and I bought it like six years ago and I still haven't used it, but you can tell that I really wanted it because I bought it. 
And now we're playing in a jungle game, and I'll have to use it for something. So that'll be really fun. Everybody likes treasure. There's some treasure. This is made with some Herstarts blocks as the base. Herstarts is a uh, mold manufacturer. You can buy the molds and then make your own blocks out of plaster. Uh, you can see that this is actually four individual blocks on the bottom. And I just made some hot glue piles and then I sprinkled some large flake gold glitter onto them and stuck some tiny little beads in there for gems. So there's a, there's a treasure pile. It's pretty awesome, right? Super cool, super easy to make. Here's a larger one that I made a uh, dwarven statue out of. That dwarven statue was just a cheap plastic dwarven mini that I painted bronze. Uh, what else do I have? Um, oh, and I have, sorry, no, I have uh, this larger piece of terrain that some people may have already seen, and I'm going to go ahead and show that on the, the main cam. This is a bridge that I started creating for a frost grave board. Uh, this one uses the pink foam, as you can see, the edges are still pink. It's four layers of the one inch foam, which is the kind that I have on display as well. And then the bridge itself is made from the uh, white foam. I'm trying to get a shot of that that actually shows some of the texture on it. Um, and I actually stacked the white foam up in layers to make the columns for the bridge underneath. And then I used the face of the foam on the top and then I just textured all of that. I textured it a really lame way because uh, I didn't have my fancy rolling pins yet. So I actually manually made that cobblestone texture with a pen. That took a while and I wouldn't recommend it. So that's that. <laughs> what else do we have? Oh, we have some boats. Sorry. So some of you guys have probably seen the, uh, the pirate ship that I made for our game. And Mike was able to find a couple more of these Mega Blocks pirate ships on uh, on Goodwill, I think actually he, he's a Goodwill guru. Um, so I will be doing a project built on these as well. And the very first step for these bad boys is to take all of the clips off, all the pegs off, because as much fun as it might be, Shad doesn't let us play D and D with Legos yet. Yeah. Okay, if you give me that. The, uh, the real quick and easy way to get these pegs off, I tried a Dremel because I'm an idiot, but uh, mostly that ended up with melting plastic all over the place. But these flush snips, which you can spend, I think, $30 on for the Games Workshop ones, um, or you can go to Harbor Freight, are really easy to just pop right off. And I don't know if you can see where that one was, but yep. there's that flat spot where the peg used to be. And then I'll glue some uh, coffee stirrers to make the wood planks, and that'll be really, really cool. Okay, so that's that. Now, if you saw the poll for this, you know that uh, Shad just asked, I think, on Thursday, maybe it was Friday, if anybody could do this, and uh, I said yes. And I don't know why, because I didn't really have anything ready to go. So. You're getting the full brunt of that. So you're, you're just going to have to deal with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I want to show you just some basic techniques and tools. So uh, you want to move the yep. screen to the other side. And then mm -hmm. maybe we'll bring that camera in to the hot wire cutter. All right. Oops, and I'm giving people motion sickness. <laughs> Thanks for being patient with us, guys. Okay. All right. So I, I have this hot wire foam cutter. It's from the hot wire foam factory. And uh, it gets really hot. Don't touch that wire. You'll burn yourself. <laughs> so this is foam. This is the, uh, the foam core from the dollar store. 
Specifically here in Portland, I buy it at the Dollar Tree, and I think the brand is Adams. And the brand that I buy has two choices of color. They have a white backed foam and they have a black backed foam. The foam in the middle is white for either of those. Uh, but the paper actually makes a difference because the black paper doesn't seem to have as strong of an adhesive as the white backed foam. So this stuff is actually really easy to peel. And I'm gonna just cut a piece real quick just so you can see how easily this foam cutter cuts through foam. Just gonna cut a small strip here and I am not using a guide or anything because I didn't have it set up in it and I apologize again for that. Didn't have it set up in advance and I just wanted to have a small enough piece that I could show you exactly how to do some texturing to make some basic brickwork. So I'm going to turn the cutter off and I'm going to unplug it and now it's safe to touch already, which I'm not going to do just because I don't have to. But this. And then it looks like you can still see this. So this is my hobby can, you can see that. Uh, and I have to find my knife. Thank you. I used the force and my knife just showed up in my hand here. Uh, the very, the very uh, simplest technique that I think is really important to know is basically just carving bricks into foam and then texturing those bricks with a variety of different techniques. Hold on. There's a straight edge, a T-square. I've been using it for a while. I'm not doing anything in particular or fancy or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and just make a couple. I'm not cutting all the way through here. I'm just cutting like maybe even not even halfway, but basically I'm scoring the surface of the foam with the knife. And when you're working with foam, you want to make sure that you also have a really sharp blade in your hobby knife. If you don't have a sharp blade, you will tear the heck out of the foam, and the tears are not the texture that we're going for. Um, I don't know if we can see. It's really hard to see when it's just been scored, but I'll try to separate that out so that you can see those score lines. The reason that this is a two-step process is because no one can see those scores, but if you take a pen, and it doesn't have to be a Bic, product placement here. It could be your pen. If you send us a pen, this could be yours. Um, you just use the pen to go over the lines that are already scored in. And then you've got a great depth there that can be seen more easily by the camera. You'll be able to feel the texture and you can actually even see it has a little bit of depth in it. Maybe you can see that. It looks like it. So once you've got that, you've got your like, yay, brick lines going this way. Then you want brick lines going this way. So when you're making bricks, we're not making a grid because that would be silly. So we're just going to offset these. These aren't really the scale that I would normally craft bricks at. I just wanted to kind of um, exaggerate the size and texture here so that you could see it more easily. So I'm just really quickly going to score those lines again with the exacto knife and then I go over those lines with my pen. And when I use the pen, I'm pushing pretty firmly. I'm not trying to like get to the cutting board underneath the foam or anything. That would be silly, but I am putting a substantial pressure. And then I usually do that other line the other way again. And mostly that is just to make sure that any directional lines that are there as a result of the pen aren't above and below the bricks, but they're going along the longest lines because that'll be harder to see later. So now you have bricks. Ta-da! There are a lot of ways to make bricks. I want to show the difference between that kind of brick and one of these making bricks.
I have these two. I've actually never used this tool, so I might try this just because I'm curious if it's any different than this. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same piece of foam because we're on a budget, guys. Hold on. Uh, I have to untwist this first. You can tell I've used this tool a lot. Boop, 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 boop. So this is going to be a while. Uh, this isn't just like, it's the same principle as the hot wire foam cutter. It is, it is a hot wire foam cutter, the, what is it, hot wire foam factory tool. Uh, this I think is their engraving tool. Um, and it takes slightly longer to warm up, especially when you don't turn it on. I'm going to turn it on now. Uh, it takes longer to warm up than just the wire cutter uh, because it's thicker. It's, it's going to take a second to heat up, uh, just like a hot glue gun would. It also takes longer to cool down. So when you're done cutting with this, don't grab it by that metal tip. That would be a mistake. And we do have an attorney that plays with us, and he'd probably tell you that's a not a good idea. And I'd probably get in trouble if I told you it was a good idea. So all around, we're just going to try to avoid that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to see if it's hot yet. Okay, so it looks like it's hot already. And you can tell because when I touch it to the foam, when I touch it to the foam, it starts to melt the foam. Ta-da! Pretty cool, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and do brick lines right here. <laughs> kind of next to where we already did those other brick lines. It might be a good idea to uh, use a guide or at least have an idea of what you're doing before you start. Mostly I just wanted to see what the difference would be if we looked at these compared to the ones that we made with the exacto and the pen. Okay, so I'm going to hang that right here. The metal is not touching the wood. So you have the new brick lines here. And the old brick lines there. I mean, these are those are actually faster to do, and it, it looks fine. I think that if I turned the temperature down, because I do have a control that I can use on the on the thing, the power thing, the transformer. I don't know uh, that I can control the temperature, and I think if I just have it less hot, it will melt more slowly, and I'd have more control over the lines. We could actually try that and see if that theory is true or not. So I'll just turn it to off and then turn it up just a little bit and see if that makes a difference. I'm also really curious to try this this thing. Uh, what is this one called? I think that's just a plunge knife. So Mike thinks it's called a plunge knife. I'll look it up. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna look it up because we want to make sure the information we give you is accurate and complete. Also because if the hot wire foam factory people watch this, they don't like scream at the screen saying, no, it's not the plunge knife, you idiots. It's the gibbly do knife. And we'll be like, sorry guys, it's the gibbly do knife. We didn't know. It's probably not what it's called. But... <laughs> okay, so this has hopefully had some time to cool back down. I'm gonna try it real quick just to see what happens. Okay, I did not turn it back on. This is why having a uh, having four a inch thread hot in there. Oh, so this is a four inch hot knife. Must be about four inches long, I'm guessing. So, which I think if you put that in some sort of a sled. Mike says if we put this in a sled, is that is about four inches long? Yeah, but I'm thinking you could actually get that thickness of a line. Oh, like this thick? Yeah, but you'd only want to put just the tip of the knife in the foam. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to get a huge. I'm going to try this line again. So, I don't know. I can't tell if I'm actually... I can't tell if that's hot or if it's just... Because it's pointy and it's foam. <laughs> <laughs> Anything will texture foam. Check this out. So, I haven't cut my nails in like a week. So, if I just go like... It makes a line there. Probably not the most effective tool that you can use, but... You can just use your fingernails if you're in a pinch. Ta-da! Can you see that? Looks like it. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. it. It's terrible. I know. It's the worst. 
Yeah, I'm not convinced that that's cutting. I think that's just drawing because it's sharper and harder than the foam. Anyways, I'm going to turn this one off again. I'm going to unplug it. And I'm really curious to try this thing. So I'm going to turn this on. And we'll see how it goes. Because it is, it is quite a bit finer of a tip. Yeah. I used to use a soldering iron, so that, that thing would actually work out really well. <laughs> okay, so I don't know how long it takes to heat up. It doesn't seem to be hot yet. <laughs> does, it, does it have a switch? It does have a switch. There's a switch on it, everybody. Man, I'm super pro here. Okay, so it's already getting hot. I can, okay, that's definitely getting hot already. Okay, so we have this little guy and we have our foam. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's super hot. I'm gonna go ahead and do four lines like we're making sheet music. How much pressure are you using? I'm hardly touching it at this point. So you can see that it's very hot and it's cutting really fast. I'm going to turn it down and try again. I mean, this thing will cut right through this right now. Okay. Okay, so that's a little bit less hot. Can you see it? Yeah, you can still see it. So that's not a very deep line. You kind of have to play with a tool like this to uh, to balance out the amount of pressure required to do something versus too much heat to have any control over it. And I just I haven't used this particular set of tools enough yet, but it certainly seems like it's an effective tool and at this temperature I mean it's definitely got more control <laughs> so there are the bricks this latest set of bricks are what I just made and those look pretty cool mm -hmm. but bricks just by themselves just like the shape of bricks aren't very appealing. So what I usually do is I cheat when I make big textured surfaces because my amazing wife built me this textured rolling pin and uh, it's basically just sculpting epoxy over some gravel that was glued onto a dollar store wooden rolling pin. And uh, because that's what I've got, I can just roll straight onto my foam and a couple of times with the roller and I have a bumpy stone texture. So when you do that on top of bricks, you get a bumpy stone texture with bricks on it. Not everybody has one of these things. I'm guessing most people don't have one of these. Uh, what I used to do is either just go outside and find a piece of gravel or a rock maybe like this big that I could control uh, that I like the texture of or everybody should be able to steal some tinfoil from somewhere and make their own little rock so here's a sweet rock that I just made it's a space rock very rare um, we've got our bricks right you can see those and now we've got our texturing machine and I'm literally just gonna take the texture from the tin foil wadded up and roll it onto the surface of the foam. And now you've got a textured brick pattern that can then be painted. I'll do it on this last one too. Can you see that okay on the screen? It looks like it's coming up pretty well. So that is a textured brick surface. Ta da! Now the. Uh, <clears throat> The exacto knife and the pen is the technique that I used when I was making the arch that I showed off earlier. 
this archway right here. Um, I haven't glued these plant pieces in yet, so that's why they're falling off when I move it. Um, so I did that exact same technique on these bricks. I just kind of planned out a little bit more what size I wanted the stones to all be before doing that particular project. Um, and then for paint, you know, I just did a base coat of like a ugly tan. And then I went over some bricks with a little bit more of a green, some bricks with a little bit more of a red, some bricks I actually highlighted a little bit of yellow, and then I did a wash around a bunch of them. And that's how I got this lovely um, multicolored brick structure. Uh, the archway here, I think I actually did use the hot wire cutter to get that circle because it's an inch piece of foam. And it's hard for me, at least, to cut straight up and down with just an exacto knife through anything more than about a half inch. Um, and then I also really wanted to show you guys how to get to this lovely foam that is so easy to work with. Uh, the foam that I used, again, for this construction is this pink foam. And this pink foam... Uh, I have a larger sheet there, and it's got the picture of the Pink Panther on it and everything. You can see that right over there. Um, but I get these sheets now. They actually sell them as uh, hobby sheets at Home Depot because you can get them in a two foot by two foot square, which is way more manageable than when I first started. And I would buy them in an eight foot long section and then try to fit them into a car. Uh, a Ford Focus is not a great way to haul an eight foot long four foot wide piece of two inch foam. And the, the people at Home Depot usually looked at me like I was crazy when I asked if they could cut it into like one, uh, one foot squares. Um, so there you go. Now you can buy them. It's a little bit more expensive, I think, for one sheet that is two feet by two feet and an inch thick. I think it's about five bucks, um, which is still a great deal considering how much material you'll get because this is two feet tall and the miniatures that we use are like just give me anybody the miniatures that we use for these games right are only this tall they're this big this big and the sheet that i get is this big it's like this big it's so big ah! I had to keep that flaming sword away from the foam or it'll melt. Um, so this stuff is great. It's not the cheapest material. Uh, and for doing bigger structures, it's fantastic. A lot of people want smaller buildings though. And for smaller buildings, I think that this foam, this stuff is really your best bet. So I wanna show real quick how to get a sheet from the Dollar Tree to look like the $10 sheet of styrene that you'd buy at a hobby store. We're going to clear off the hobby space. I'm going to turn this camera around. Can I just turn this? Or is that? I'll just pick it up. What's it looking at? That's this corner here. Okay. So, this is again straight from the dollar store. Uh, it's a piece of foam core. It'll be in the craft section or the school section. Hey. Um, and I. I have like 10 of these sheets basically any given time just because I use them for lots of stuff. Um, because most of my stuff isn't super precise, I don't have to worry about tearing a little bit of a corner off. But what I do is I just lay it flat and then I start to peel up the corner of the foam, of the, the paper backing on the foam. You can kind of see, I didn't have to heat this or do anything weird with it. I literally just start to work my fingers under the edge and then wow. I get one <laughs> sheet. Hopefully I can do it in a single pull, but sometimes it takes a couple of pulls. Voila. So, that's a single pull. Pretty happy with that. 
Not only do I now have a piece of usable foam, it will be the same on the other side as well. Uh, but I have a piece of foam that I can use on this surface. It takes texture really well. It's still pretty rigid. It's more rigid than uh, just like straight corrugated cardboard. And you can cut it really easily with an X-Acto. You can cut it with a hot wire foam cutter. And uh, one of my new favorite toys are my uh, Green Stuff World textured rolling pins. Um, they probably saw that I had that giant textured rolling pin and were like, hey, we could do that but smaller and put cool patterns on it. And that guy Howard would buy them. And that's exactly what happened. Um, this piece of terrain, this, uh, this diorama base that I did, that surface here is the, uh, the top surface here there is the, uh, the same material here. And it is just pressed on texture with the rolling pin. And you can see a sheet here, like a small section. That's just a small area that I used a larger rolling pin on from the green stuff world. And I have like this Celtic textured one and the brick textured one and an Aztec one. I actually really like the Aztec one. It's kind of fun looking. It's got these crazy designs on it. It's like the Mayan calendar coin almost. And it's got some other fun patterns. But it's really easy. I think you can see that here. You have to put quite a bit of pressure onto the foam, but you can roll it straight into the surface and it'll pick up the detail. I wouldn't say really well because this stuff isn't even designed for the foam. It's actually designed for sculpting epoxy or green stuff, hence green stuff world, right? But I have found that it works well enough that you can get the texture to show up. Is that showing up? Yeah, a little bit. So you can actually see the pattern just in the surface of the foam. So it's a really fun material to work with, and I, I love it. I think it's great. And I highly recommend if you're looking at building anything for gaming with, that you start with this stuff, because it's really fantastic. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. Question? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of paints do you use when you do you use GW paint? Do you use Army Painter paint? Do you use just craft store paint for when, most of the when using uh, paints on a really big piece of terrain? I recommend using Games Workshop paint because it's the most expensive and. Uh, you'll have to buy the most, and Games Workshop stores will love you for it. Uh, if you actually just want to build some terrain and you don't want to spend money, uh, I usually use the, the like two ounce bottles from like Michael's or Joann's or Craft Warehouse. When they're on sale, those little craft paints, I'll show you, I'll be right back. This door leads into my actual hobby space. Oh, here we go. So this stuff, like this is an apple apple barrel one. I'm sure you don't know how to get to that. Apple barrel. Uh, but it's like the Michaels brand or the Joanne brand or the Martha Stewart brand or whatever. All of that stuff uh, goes on sale. I bought a whole bunch of it once when, when it was on clearance at Michaels. And I got, uh, I think I got a bottle. Each bottle was 50 cents. So you can do a piece this size, like one piece of terrain this size, uh, with about half of this much paint. So if you're looking at using like four colors, maybe six colors, if you want to talk about adding a black and a white plus four colors, I mean, that's like $3 worth of paint if you get it on sale, six to $10 if it's not on sale for whatever reason. But that's, I mean, six bottles of this is enough to do like five or more pieces of terrain this size. And that's a pretty sizable piece. I mean, if you think about having five or six pieces of terrain this large, you're talking about having a pretty good portion of your table covered for really cheap. And that's what I like about these materials. Next question. <laughs> Here's a tree. 
tree. Uh, I bought some cheap plastic palm trees because uh, Shad keeps telling me how much he hates trees that fall apart all the time. But he was also telling me that he hates the uh, the aquarium plastic plant look. So my goal is to at some point paint a bunch of these trees. Uh, this one has already had the trunk painted and the leaves have been base coated, but it's hard to tell. They're not nearly as shiny as they are when they first come out. And I'm planning on doing quite a few of these. Because um, again, I like doing stuff on the cheap. For painting miniatures, Mike just hooked me up. He transferred all of my, I, I had a handful of Citadel paints and he uh, transferred them for me into these dropper bottles. Because I love dropper bottles. I don't know how I was doing this, but I've been painting models, uh, like for Warhammer and stuff, for 25, 30 years, for a long time. And I've always used like these kinds of paints, or uh, when I was feeling really rich, I'd use the, uh, the golden acrylic or the Liquitex uh, acrylic paints, like the artist quality paints. And uh, man, it makes a huge difference. If you didn't know, uh, painting with paints that were designed for miniatures. So there's a tip, tip from Howard, pro tip. Don't spend 30 years being an idiot. All right. What I don't even know what time it is. Like, how long have we been doing this? Yeah, oh, 36 minutes. 36 minutes, yeah. guys. Is anybody watching that actually has a question for us? Good safety tip on flaming swords. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, why would you use a four-inch hot knife? Is from Chad. Uh, I mean, you'd use it to shape stuff. Uh, if I had a piece of foam that was thicker, uh, I'll be right back. Or plunge cuts, if you want to make a window. Yeah, yeah. So we could actually do a window real quick. Yeah. But for me, like, if I had a four inch knife, I could actually go in and shape the contours on something like this bridge piece. And that would be really easy to use and get into, and especially for something like can you get the, the stairs in there? I have stairs on that side, and with that hot knife, you could actually just cut those in straight into the foam without having to pre-build them and set them like I did on that one. Or if you wanted to make, let's say, a hole here for a tree trunk. Or if I wanted to make a hole for a tree trunk on something. Let's see. That's actually a great idea. Let's show you. So here we go. Got to turn it on, ladies and gents. Let's see. Let's move this up. Dun, 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 dun. So right here, that looks like a great spot for a tree, don't you think? Right there. Right there. Oh, you know what? That's actually not foam anymore. I sculpted some stuff under that. <laughs> um, yeah, this side. Yes. Yeah, let me switch it around. Okay, so this should be foam right here. That's foam. So I just stabbed a little hole in there. And now I've got this plastic stubby for the tree trunk. And it just sits right in there. Ta-da! Ta also, make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area because I don't know if you'll get high, but you'll definitely get a headache uh, pretty quickly if you're cutting hot foam in an unventilated room. The foam's not hot, though. The cutter is hot. So if you're melting foam, you get crazy amounts of that toxic smoke, and it's, it's not good for you. I was going to try to show how to make the base for this guy because that water base is not finished yet. That's really good. Um, but I don't know where my pieces of sprue went. Because what that plastic, or I mean what the what the wave is made out of is the plastic sprue that the Mini came in. Not the sprue, the box, the clear plastic box that the Mini actually came in. Uh, so I just cut it into a triangle shape and then another one into a triangle shape. And I used a candle 
to melt the foam or to melt the plastic a little bit, um, just a tiny little bit, like to make it soft so I could bend it. And then I glued it in place, and then I used some um, acrylic medium, some high gloss, thick gel, to put on the edges there. And I was going to do some more. I just would do a few more layers and then maybe another wash or so to get some color on it. But I like that it's clear and it looks it looks like splashy water pretty well, I think. It's pretty effective, especially since it's not even finished. Ta -da. Hulk for scale. <laughs> this is uh, this is by far one of the most important tools in any crafter's collection. I think if you could only have two tools in your whole crafting collection, it would be these two. Because this can take anything apart and this can put it back together. That's not really the reason. This actually is very useful for making all sorts of things, like uh, like black puddings, if you get the colored stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this you can use to cut and shape. And if you're in a pinch and you don't have a hot wire foam cutter and you're like, I really want to try cutting stuff with foam that's it's a hot tool, well, you could just use this. You wouldn't have any control over it because it's super thick, obviously, but it at least would give you that inhaling the toxic fumes experience that you're currently missing out on. You could make craters. I mean. You could. You could definitely make craters. Um, but you can also, like, like literally the, the gold pile, like underneath the glitter is just hot glue. And this one's actually even taller. So like the can can use hot glue to make stuff um, textured, like to give it some height. Um. So yeah, I don't really know what else I'd talk to you about today. Um, I don't have anything set up to paint. I have some stuff that I need to get painted. Uh, I could show off my work in progress stuff if you wanted to see that. I have a couple of commissions still from Shad that I have to finish. Uh, I also have a commission to finish of a uh, Ma Crusher, which is really cool. I actually like the way it's coming out, but I need to finish it. Um, so I could show those off. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's my show. <laughs> and Mike's. So that is the Ma Crusher that I'm currently working on. And oops, focus on so because I'm moving in the background. There's the orc. Is that a war boss or something like that? Yeah. Uh, that would go with him. Uh, there's one that also is actually mounted onto him. So I've got two of those orcs to paint. One that I'll be able to take off of the Ma Crusher. And one that'll be on its own base for when he's not on the Ma Crusher. But I really like this color scheme. I didn't come up with this color scheme. Uh, I found it online. And if you just go to Cool Mini or not and look up different minis. And then sort by rating. You find the coolest ones first. And typically what I try to do is if I'm painting a mini and I don't have any idea of what I want to do with it. I'll just look for my favorite version of somebody else's online and then not blatantly copy it, I hope, uh, but like take some inspiration from that at least. So that's that's the goal with this one. I was really liked the more realistic color palette that, that the guy used for that one. This one I thought I could show off because this is painted with both the uh, the cheap craft paints and the art. This one's actually, I used artist acrylics on that. And look at the red on that. The on the bottom of that ship. This is one of the what are they called? It's the dwarves from the new uh, Games Workshop game. Um, I don't know if it's 40k or if it's Warhammer Fantasy. It's the Kar Karazan dwarves or whatever they're called. But it's like the sky boat. So this side is done, and that's like 
two or three coats of the uh, the artist colors acrylic so like the higher quality acrylic paints but they're not designed for minis that's one paint coat uh, on top of that with the uh, I think those are the Vallejo paints but the difference in coverage there I think is unbelievable because I was getting nowhere with that side so I wanted to just kind of keep it for a while I know Shad wants me to finish it at some point but at, uh, at a certain level I was like I cannot believe the difference in quality for these paints so most of this is done with the other paints um, but that's what I'm currently working with I now am a firm believer in spending more money on less paint you also waste a lot less paint because when you're using a dropper bottle like you can put three drops of paint on your palette instead of like a lot of paint that then just dries up and gets wasted also wet palette also you can use a wet palette uh, people show there are plenty of articles on how to do that I think Reaper probably has an article on how to do it I know there's an article on Cool Me You're Not. Cool Me You're Not even has like an ice palette where they're literally using uh, paper towels and an ice tray and it just talks about the benefits of using a wet palette because your paint doesn't dry as quickly. Shockingly, when you're painting and you're blending paints, uh, drying quickly is not always to your advantage. What's it got? It's fantasy. Yeah. Is that your thing? Oh, okay. So that actually if I ever get to finish the party, you may be able to use it. Oh, well, I'll finish it then. <laughs> I believe there's a new 5e book coming out. Yeah, that oh. has airships in it, right? Yeah. So uh, when I first started that, um, the Tempest, Tempest ship, the, the first makeup block ship that I did, I was originally going to use it as an airship, and it just didn't yeah. ever get finished. Yeah, no, no, no. So now I have two more. I could turn one of those into an airship, but we'll see. I mean, I could potentially still convert it into an airship at some point. That'd be pretty easy. Because it's just taking the boat and doing the thing. Finish the boat. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just use the captain. The no, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, what would you use for the cylinder for an airship? Uh, probably a three liter bottle, like from the dollar store. Like, literally, I was going to use the Shasta bottle uh, because they're larger than the two liter bottles, and that would be big enough. Or you could use a couple of those and then just wrap them with um, canvas or something like that and starch them and stain them. They'd look really cool, I think. Um, and use ribbing or something to cover all the seam. Yeah. Yeah, because you can even use, uh, you can put some dowels onto a bottle, like a two liter bottle, put some dowels along the side of it and then wrap it with canvas. And then it's got that kind of ribbed structure to it. And then just get a, cone shape of some sort and just wrap the whole thing with canvas or any other fabric. Uh, I think canvas is easy just because it's pretty cheap. You can get it um, and then you can just do a wash on it to stain it or spray it with something. It'll come out looking really cool. What's your favorite thing that I've shown today? Anything? <laughs> I really like the bridge. I really like this bridge too. What do you guys think? Should I do this as a, should I finish it for Frostgrave or should I redo it as a jungle bridge? What do you think? Can it, would it even work as a jungle bridge? Well, I don't know. I think more Frostgrave just because it, Cause of the, it's kind of hard to get the, well, that actually gets to get in the detail, right? But three uh, bones minis. Yeah, those skeletons. are the Reaper skeletons. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of it is uh, just the paint colors. So you could definitely make it. What did he say? They make a really cool looking. It didn't work as it didn't work as either. Oh okay. So my problem is like space. I don't really have space to do a whole set of frost grave terrain and a whole set of ghost archipelago terrain. And I really like the idea of ghost archipelago. I've not actually played either. <laughs> Uh, I know Adam in our group has played Frostgrave quite a bit. Doug has played, you've played Frostgrave. I made the Frostgrave template. Okay, so. Um, yeah, there's a, we do have a sheet for building your own Frostgrave army out of Excel. Because so, it, it's fun. Because why not? Um, 
but it's also like Ghost Archipelago takes a lot of the same basic elements as far as I understand. So like you can use any minis that you want and you can basically set up any terrains that you want and if it looks cool and you can put whatever your your objective markers are on the board then you're good to go. And I have seen some frost grape terrain that is like six feet by four feet uh, so it's just like massive boards uh, for tournament play or, or like uh, convention play and it just looks really cool so that was my whole point for doing this. I also really like the idea of having something that's usable for uh, both a fun game like that and for use in Dungeons and Dragons because I like having pieces get used over and over again. Uh, one of the biggest pieces I ever did was the uh, Shadowfang Keep terrain piece that Shad asked me to do years ago. And that piece was massive. I mean, the, the whole structure was probably six feet long. And at some point, I think that tower was probably over two feet tall. Um, and just because it's such a big piece, it's not very versatile. So I'm trying to focus on like making smaller pieces that are cool that can be used for a lot of things because I really like seeing my stuff get used. It's about three feet. Oh, it's at least three feet wide. Yeah, so it's like it three huge. feet wide, six feet long, at least two feet tall. Yeah, it, Sounds it like we modular. should try that game one of these Sundays. Yeah, uh, you talking uh, Ghost Archipelago? I'd give that a try for sure. I'm not able to spreadsheet for that again. <laughs> <laughs> There's no. got to be something. Somebody's something. Yeah. No, the frost grave is pretty easy to do as well. So we'll definitely have to play one of those two. I haven't heard much about the ghost structure. It's the same rule system. Like it's the it same. Is. Yeah, it's oh. basically an expansion to frost grave. Oh, well then. So yeah. Uh, they're just like, well, frost grave was fun, but now people want to try a different setting. How about a jungle setting? Well, I'll just do jungle and cover it in snow. <laughs> the snow covered jungles. Well, Frost was the whole thing. It was, it was a melting yeah. area. So, yeah, I like this. Sporing. I like the story behind it. Uh, and I think Ghost Archipelago is very similar. Like, uh, there are these archipelago, this, this jungle island series, and people have gone exploring. But I think people wake up with powers and are called to the Ghost Archipelago. And uh, you go and you try to find treasure, get back out. That's that's my understanding. I haven't played it. <laughs> if you've played it and you're watching and you hate me right now, I'm sorry. I can't even tell because you're not saying it on the stream. No one's saying it. The jungle train <laughs> could also be used for the jungles of troll. That's exactly my point. That's exactly my point. So jungle, jungle bridge it is. I'll convert this whole thing. It'll be cool. We'll paint it up, jungle colors. I've got a bunch of flock. I have a bunch of flock. Michael and I both have a bunch of flock. You're like, what the flock? Buka flock? Um, flock coming out of you. <laughs> it's fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, we could actually just like open this box and see what the heck we got. Let's do that. Yeah. I'm kind of curious. Uh, so Michael brought over some. Uh, some mega blocks, you know how we got those two new ships? We also have this random box of just massive bunches of mega blocks and maybe Legos. Yep, and Duplos. And Duplos. It's just whatever. It was a you buy, or I saw those two ships, but it also came with 16 pounds of, of huggies, of extra Legos. So let's shrink this down. Shrink that down so we can just pull this out. So castle. I don't know what this is. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, that's the front of the ship. Oh, okay. That's fun. So that's the front of the the Dead Eye Phantom, I think, is what that one's called. So there's some extra pieces. The, the sure. bigger ship. That's actually the um, Flying Dutchman, or not? From because it's a Pirates of the Caribbean Mega Block set. Oh, okay. But then there's. So inside this, there is another pirate ship, and these are two of the pieces right there. Look at the palm tree. Oh, yeah. That doesn't look and there's at all. Skulls. On oh, the yeah, that's the mast. mast. That's a ball. One of them. There's another bone mast piece. 
Sorry about the noise, everybody. Loud noises! More castle walls. Oh, there's a cannon? I don't know. I think those cannons are too yeah. big, though. Those cannons are enormous. Well, they're 28 millimeter. Like, I mean, if we took this cannon circle? and this guy, like, the guy is like, ah, that's not fair. Like, it's bigger than he is. <laughs> You're a robot in the Oh, yeah. There you go, Chad. You have a robot minotaur. There you go. Like, I mean, that, that's just a you sweet piece of terrain for hey, we got those Legos that could go on it. A, a button. I don't know. The button doesn't do anything. Oh, I think it has something to do with that piece. It's broken. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is... So there's a smaller piece. Ah, here we go. These two pieces down here are the Flying Dutchman, or parts of it. Cause, oh, okay. Because there's the instructions. Oh, okay. So that's this thing? This is the flying dutchman. No, that's or, something. This else. is the dread I can this is the dead eye phantom. Yeah. These pieces right here are for this or for something else? Or for the Dutchman. That's for this piece. Okay. So we oh, have random good. pieces as well. Yep. Which is cool. There's a Jack Sparrow menu here somewhere. <laughs> Sales. Yep. Uh, instructions for an Indiana Jones playset? From my Oh maybe there's maybe there's Indiana Jones Legos. This is a uh, bone. Crow's nest. Here's a man. So this is Cannon. honestly like this is a huge part of the craft, right? Like finding stuff on sale and then wondering how to use it. I mean, you could use this really easily yeah. as a piece of terrain if you just snip off the the top pieces and then paint it and put something else on it. I didn't have any more bags, so this is the only one. Everything else is loose. Everything else is loose. <laughs> but there's all sorts of Legos and more cannons. There's a wheel. Yeah. There's half of a water wheel or something. There's all sorts of stuff. Oh, here's a part of oh, the boat. Oh, there's a big part of the boat. So if there's the, if there's the back end of this, we have another smaller boat. Which is really cool. Is that? It looks like it would be part of it. If not there, I could even maybe go on top. I don't know. Maybe no. not. That's too deep. <laughs> We're going to find another ship. We're going to have three ships to do. Maybe, uh, there's, there's the other half of the wheel. Or is that the same, or is that the same one? Is that the same half? Oh, here's, uh, this is why Shad was yelling at me for not having. Hey, look, we got a wheel. So that's the steering wheel for the ship. It just so arrived in the mail. It just showed up. <laughs> It might be a little large, which I think is why I didn't include it originally. A bunch of, a lot of mini pigs. Something like an Ewok trap. Clearly, I meant pirate, not Ewok. Oh, here's the back of the book. I bet that fits in here, maybe. Ta da! There's the back half of the Dutton. Nice. So we're still missing part of that. Yep. It's oh, oh, hey, there's a good chunk of the Dutton. Right. Right. <laughs> nice. Oh, this has like cannons that work shooting cannons. Is it cool if we actually get the cannons working and then we leave them intact so that we can shoot at each other during the sessions? I don't see an issue with this. I also do not. And Chad's not here, so. Nope. We'll just vote. Vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. In case you missed it, we are in favor of questions. That's how Sark wants to die. <laughs> so there's a ghostly crow's nest. These are big mast pieces. Well, yeah, they are. I don't know that. Maybe, maybe I've got enough boat to use that with. Do we find the other half of the Dutchman, or is there still part of the There's, uh, oh, so here's the, here's the, that's the lower piece that you're looking for. Yeah, where did my boat go? Over here. Oh, it's over here. Yeah, that's perfect. So, I'll have to come up with something for the railing, I guess. Oh, this has the, the 
cannons too. So I guess yours has cannons on the One side, mine has cannons on the shoot at each other with the cannons. I, this, how that, could, this, that's how not could that be bad? That's not distracting at all in the game. <laughs> So there's looks like one piece still missing of this, but you could probably just figure that. We could probably figure something out there. Yeah. Unless it's I mean, it, it might be in the bag. Oh, is that that's a piece? That is a piece. That is definitely a piece. The adventurers find a statue. It's not going to come to life and attack us. I'm sure that would never happen. I think this would go in the middle. Yeah, logic. I was wondering why was the it wasn't as tall as the other piece. Because this goes in the middle. Nice. Cool. And here's the here's the wheel for the here's the other wheel for the dead ship. Bring out your dead. Uh, I just threw these columns together real quick. Those are pretty cool. <laughs> you could actually uh, we got like three of those. It's true. That's pretty cool. This is neat looking. I could use those for sure. Somebody has commented on this. Uh, <laughs> so they're just completely cobalt trap. Absolutely. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, we got a lot of stuff that I've, I've been skipping. Oh, Shad wants to know how you did the wood deck for the ship. Oh, I'll show you. That was easy. And how much would you charge for a ship commission? <laughs> the ship commission would be a lot. Wood coffee stir sticks. Uh, so, Shad, this will give you an idea of when I started that pirate ship. I got these when I was still at Dunkirk. Because the, the coffee guy just gave me a box for free of these coffee stir sticks. So, what I, what I did is I took the coffee stir sticks and I cut them into various lengths for planks and glued them down to the deck after snipping off all of the pegs. So, this might be as a request using a mini and then the scale. Oh, perfect. So that one's substantially smaller. Those are both substantially smaller than the ship I already did. But um, these could be used for a holding chase. ships or for, yeah, I mean, there's a chase scene. So we're not using two massive ships. Okay, we move, but 30 feet. Massive ships are really cool too. So we'll have, we'll have variety. Though. Yeah. Like we'll have, uh, we'll have the long boats, uh, I was kind of hoping that they have the little robot in here too, but I didn't see I it. I don't remember seeing that when I tore stuff apart. That's okay. I don't even know. That's probably a part of the bigger... Yeah. Okay. That's the front of the other ship. Yep. And then here's another mast. Yeah, yeah there's all sorts there's of... A bunch of random, random pieces. Uh, yeah, like a random demon thing. There's some wings in here somewhere. <laughs> Seriously. It's a wings. Where did I go? Got a big arm coming out. Got a little wingling dragon. Arms coming out back there. Here's his wings. I found his wings. Hey, look at that. Wings. Here's a giant golden wing. Mm hmm. Just one. Just one. Just it's one. too bad there's only one of these because we could totally make something awesome with that. Uh, get some insta, insta mold and measure it out. But then you'd have the wrong, I mean, you'd have two of the same wing. Yeah, there is that, you know, sure. It's fine, I know. There's a demon without his head now. There's a bug. Ah, there's a bug! Oh, it's coming. Oh, you can use that if you want. <laughs> what, oh. what is that? Oh, that's fun. That's kind of cool. That goes on the front of the ship. Is you, the... you could go have that go on the front of the ship. I know. That is kind of cool again. It's like a treasure chest. chest. With a Lego treasure in it. <laughs> nice. Yep, and a skull. He That's, gans. Yeah. That's not gruesome at all. No. Nope. Oh, 
that's cool. More shiny bits. It's golden dragon. No. Hey, this guy's got armor on. Yeah, that's good. I think that those wings might actually go to him. The gold wings, the giant gold wings. No, the, the oh, wings of that demon. I think those could go to him too. Oh, okay. That is a oh, I, I have a barbarian in Pathfinder <laughs> that could actually use that size of a Improved sword. Monkey craft. Um he's a barbarian that uses it's called Titan Grip, but yes. He can use weapons designed for Two size categories. It's, like a, it's a category larger than him, and because it's a specific type of tiefling, they have arms that allow them to have a bigger size than that. So he can wield two huge bastard swords running around doing colossal damage. But there aren't enough dungeons with ceilings that high. No, he could not go inside of a building. Oh, did Shadow have another question? Well, Am I supposed to actually come up with a number for the, the pirate ship commission? <laughs> it's a lot. Make me an offer. <laughs> so before I found these ships, or before Mike found these ships, I was going to ask you to bring some cardstock ship to ship, or for ship to ship battles. Yeah, not anymore. We are not using cardboard ships. It's going to yeah. be awesome. So I found these on Goodwill for it's like nine dollars, nine ninety nine plus, plus thirty dollars a ship, plus like twenty something dollars <laughs> in shipping because I didn't read the fine print. But 40 bucks for two ships. Actually, four ships, really. Four ships. And we only thought there were two. Yeah. yeah. I, I only saw I saw two ships in the auction, which was enough to get me to buy it. Yeah. And then it said 16 pounds of assorted mega blocks, which is what we've done. Today. There's a gallon bag here of assorted Ziploc, or assorted Ziploc. Eh. Yeah. Assorted mega blocks and Lego. Yeah. Because, yeah, there were actual legit Lego pieces in there. So. Um,. I think just random Yeah, pieces. random bits. Yeah. Random bits of stuff. Yeah, that's a mega block piece. That's a mega block. These are like the mega yeah. blocks. You'll there's Cave there'll be like a circle right there in the middle of a piece. That's a dead giveaway, but oh. Lego has it all right on every little right. peg. Right. But I thought about using stuff like this. These pieces as like a mold. You put yeah. that into a mold and then you can cast them in plaster or Yeah. Um, something like that. Maybe that. There's a lot of them. Yeah, I don't know who those are. There's like six of these columns. Yeah. Hey, corner piece. Nice. There's another tree base. Yeah. There's another top branch. And then we've got some other tree armatures coming in the mail soon. Oh, right. Yeah, we're going to those. So we can have a bunch of trees. A roof. Oh yeah. Thatch roof. Also make a mold. Or you could just use towel. Uh, it's really easy to make thatched roofs out of any number of different materials. Yep. Didn't possibly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll have to use a sculpt I'll have to show you sculpt a mold too. I have some, uh, just a very little bit. Yeah. Uh, I might or might not have made some mouse droids out of sculpt and mold oh, yeah. for uh, Star Cause Wars minis. Because that's just paper, like a paper. Oh, are you talking? Okay, I'm thinking something else. Sculpt and mold. You're yeah, thinking that's sculpty. I'm no, I was thinking easy mold. Oh, yeah, sculpt and mold, mold is, is like the the paper filler fiber with plaster in it. Yeah, that you yeah. put on top of the terrain to harden it and make it work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they use that a ton in uh, railroading, for sure. Let's see here. But it's been an hour, so yeah. unless you guys, and like, unless you have another specific question, I'm happy to answer. Uh, what I would ask for is if you've seen this, even if you're just watching a replay, I don't know why you'd watch us open the box in the replay, sorry. Uh, you could skip ahead. Anyways, if you did watch and you have any questions for me or for our mic and you want to see one of us craft something in particular or you had any specific crafting questions feel free to shoot me a message uh, you can shoot me a message uh, directly on twitter again it's at minilead um, or on instagram i don't know how instagram works is it at minilead still or is it I don't know. and i'll probably or ask shad 
uh, on on Twitter or Instagram, and he'll ask me, and then I'll tell him, and then he can get back to you. So whatever whatever works. Uh, but I think we're gonna go ahead and shut down. Um, Thanks for watching. Have had a great time doing this, and we are not old. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Well, Did he say old? Yes. Come on, I mean, Shad is older than me by so much. It's not even funny. Like I will never be as old as Shad is, unless he dies first, and then the next day I'd be as old as he was when he died. It's true. So yeah, I'm 40. Mike's, I think, 26. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Because Tim's 24, and you're two years older than Tim. Is that right? Yeah, but I think he's 33. No, Tim's 34. I'm 35. Well, because his birthday's in February. Oh, so. well then, yeah, I'll be 36 later. In the <laughs> yeah, year. exactly. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. You want to stop?